up YouTube? My name is Kaminari Denki and welcome back to another video. So a while ago I did a video talking about which Pokemon I think are most like my former classmates. And today I'm going to be doing the same thing for the B hero class. Now obviously I don't know them as well as I do my own former classmates so uh, these probably won't be particularly accurate. I just I did the best I could with what knowledge I do have about them, so bear with me. But anyways, let's do this. In seat number one, we have Owase Yosetsu, and I have decided that he is a machoke because he seems like a strong and helpful dude. Yeah, my entire logic behind this is that he helped Yao Momo when the LOV were attacking us during our training, and that machoke are the mover Pokemon used in Pokemon Sapphire and Ruby. Was that in Emerald? In second seat, we have Kaibara Sen. So his quirk allows him to turn his body into a drill. So, uh, drill burp. In third seat, we have Kamakiri Togaru, who was very easy to find a Pokemon for because the dude has a Mantis quirk. That's basically Scyther. I'm like 89% sure that Scyther is supposed to be a praying Mantis, so... Yeah, it works. Fox Seat is Kuroiro Shihai. This dude is a Marshadow because just like Marshadow in the Pokemon I Choose You movie, the, the dude can just disappear into the shadows and reappear again. Super cool, but also super terrifying. Fifth Seat belonged to Kendo Itsuka. So for her, I wanted a Pokemon that could learn a Mega Punch for very obvious reasons. So I looked at a lot of Pokemon and there were two that I couldn't really decide between. One was Kabfu because I feel like the disciplined mind thing just works for her, but on a completely different note, Victimy just matches her aesthetic so perfectly. Victimy is known to be a little more timid than she is, but for the aesthetics alone, and again, Mega Punch, we're gonna go with Victimy. Sixth, sixth, sixth seat. Wow, that's hard to say. Sixth seat is Kodai Yui, who is a gothita. Go gothita? Gothita. Because, um, goth vibes. I'm sorry. That That's my entire logic behind it. Just a little sino Kyoko would like me to throw in here. There is a huge difference between goths and emos. Seventh seat is Komori Kinoko, who again was a very easy person to assign a Pokemon to. Paris, because... Mushrooms. In 8th seat, we have Shiozaki Ibarra. So if you go with her quirk alone, I feel like the most obvious Pokemon would be Tangela. However, I faced off against her in first year, and there is more to her than just her quirk. So I did go with a grass type Pokemon, but I went with Zarina. Because grass, beautiful, and powerful. That being said, there's just one thing that really makes my brain itch about this. For Steenie to evolve into Zarina, it needs to learn Stomp, and Ibarra doesn't really strike me as a stompy person, but again, beauty, power, grass, that works. Ninth seat is Shishida Jirota, who I've decided is a herdier because the dude is fluffy and seems very loyal to his friends, so it kind of works, and I'm sorry if that's offensive. Again, I don't know that much about this class, okay? I do not know what lies beyond the very obvious personality things and their quirks. Again, I'm just doing the best I can with what knowledge I have. In 10th seat, we have Shoda Nirengeki, who I've assigned Alolan Sandshrew to. I went with Alolan Sandshrew because I feel like aesthetically they look pretty similar. But also, I went with Alolan Sandshrew because it has the ability to learn Fury Cutter, which is a move that doubles in impact on succession. So, quite similar to his quirk. There are very few students in this class where I feel like I actually nailed it with assigning a Pokemon to them, and he is one of them. 11th seat is Sunatori Pony, who I have assigned Galarian Ponyta to. I did go looking for a Pokemon that had two horns to match her quirk, but... I think Galarian Ponyta fits her better because she's just a very sweet and pure and impressionable soul and I think Galarian Ponyta just fits her way better than anything else. 12th seat is Suburawa Kosei who I've assigned Spiro to and half of that reason is the hair like it, it just 
It looks like the top of a Spiro's head, I'm sorry. Aside from that, I feel like his personality kind of matches that with Spiro. Going back to school days when it came to Taunty and Kachan, he was always in a group, like a group of Spiros. Because safety in numbers, I guess. But yeah, he's a Spiro. Also, just a little side note, this is not me taunting the guy at all. Spiros evolve into Fearos, which are one of the most fearsome bird Pokemon ever. So, um, major respect. In seat number 13, we have Tetsu, 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 who is the strong, manly metal dude. So for him, I needed a strong metal Pokemon, and I went for the Agron. I just feel like it fits so perfectly. In seat number 14, we have Takage Sutuna, who I have assigned Uxi to. Uxi. Uxi. However the heck you say it, that is her Pokemon. Not because of some kind of aesthetic or something to do with her quirk. I picked this Pokemon because it is intelligent and she is one of the smartest people I went to school with. In seat number 15 we have Fukidashi Manga who is an Exploud. I don't think I need to explain too much about why this one works. In seat number 16 we have Honenoki Juzu who I'm assigning Scraggy to mainly because of, you know, the teeth situation going on. But also because this dude is a powerful fighter, so I needed to give him a fighting type Pokemon. Seat number 17 belonged to Bondo Kajiro, and I'm assigning him the Pokemon Spit Ops. Again, I'm not entirely sure if I'm saying that right, but we're gonna roll with it. So the reason I've assigned this Pokemon to him is because of the move Silk Trap, which kind of reminds me of his quirk, you know? sticky stuff that gets people trapped in it. In seat number 18 we have Monoma Nito who was by far the easiest person to find a Pokemon for. Monoma is a Smeargle because Smeargle only learns one move, Sketch, which allows it to steal the move from its opponent. So it can basically learn any move in the entire game. It's basically Monoma, like th this was too perfect. Because I wanted to call him a Smeargle, that is the only reason I agreed to do this video. Just to call him a Smeargle. Seriously, it is just so fun to say Smeargle. 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 That's gonna stop sounding like a word now. Smeargle. In seat number 19, we have Yanagi Reiko, who I have assigned God of War to because her quirk allows her to move things telepathically. And if you go onto Bulbapedia and read about God of War, it mentions that it moves things telepathically. Psychically? Telepathically? That is the right word, isn't it? I looked it up. It is telekinetic powers. It's telekinetic powers enable it to lift objects. And in seat number 20, we have Ren Hiryu, who I have assigned the Pokemon Cyclozar because it's a green reptile that has the ability shed skin. So since I did Aizawa Sensei when I did my class, I decided it's only fair to assign a Pokemon to Vlad King as well. And I actually have the perfect Pokemon for him. Hariyama. It is a strong, powerful fighting type Pokemon that, when it gets older, dedicates its life to training Makuhita. Literally, it becomes a teacher. How perfect is that? So that pretty much covers everyone in the hero course of my first year at UA. However, there's one more student I feel I need to include before I wrap up this little part of the series. Shinso Hitoshi. I think that he is a Mewtwo because he is purple, he is brooding, he can control your mind, but he's just really misunderstood and just wants to find his place in the world. I feel like nothing suits him better than Mewtwo. Especially if you're basing it off of Mewtwo from the first Pokemon movie. We did it. We got through this. It took me a month to figure out Pokemon for everyone. But we did it. And we actually recorded the video before the camera died. But it's busy dying right now. So I better get through this outro very, very quickly. So if you're still watching this, I'm going to assume that you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Share it so that more people can enjoy this little video of mine. And to help the channel grow. And if you're new and want to see more videos from me or Kyoka or anyone else who may appear on this channel, be sure to hit subscribe and book the bell. You can also find us on our other socials, mainly TikTok, pretty much daily videos on there. So yeah, the links to that and Twitter and Instagram and all my other socials will be down in the description. 
and yeah i'm blanking on what else i should say because like the camera battery warning is going and it's really distracting i think that's everything i had to say for the outro so yeah thank you again for watching and until the next video you just keep rocking bye